Tonight, a plea for Air Peninsula motorists to drive safe as harvest season begins. And the Port Perry Catholic Diocese welcomes a new bishop. From our seven Spencer Golf Studios, your nightly news with John Hunt begins now. Good evening. Police have issued fresh calls for driver safety ahead of this year's harvest season, as increasing amounts of heavy vehicles begin to appear on our roads. Patrols will be out in force to catch anyone doing the wrong thing. A line of headers working together to reap this year's harvest, with extra trucks now on the roster to help deliver grain to silos. Police have renewed calls for drivers to take extra care as heavy vehicles begin to hit the road. The heavies need to be given serious consideration and uh, we'll all make happy trips. It's hoped T Port's grain bunkers at Lock and Lucky Bay will help divert some of the traffic away from Port Lincoln. Police say tourists and grain nomads on the highways are another hurdle facing the road network. That adds another layer of complexity to this because uh, caravans interacting with heavy vehicles on our uh, narrow roads can, be, can cause difficulties. Air Peninsula's tight winding roads make it difficult to overtake at the best of times. Drivers are being encouraged to remain patient. A truck that's doing 100 kilometres an hour between Cummins and Port Lincoln, it will t the additional journey time is around four minutes if you wanted to travel at 110 kilometres. Authorities say they were relatively pleased with last year's harvest, with only a handful of drivers being reported. But I don't believe that we had a, an incident involving grain carters, so that was well done. Patrols will be out in force conducting large-scale traffic stops. They're warning that if you're doing the wrong thing, you will be caught. Nathan Rector, 7 Spencer Golf News. Port Augusta's rental market is experiencing high demand, with real estate agents confirming occupancy levels are almost at capacity. They say recent announcements of a number of projects planned for the city is behind the influx. Potential renters in Port Augusta are finding it difficult to find a place to call home. The city's renewable energy projects and bridge duplication are said to be responsible for rental shortages across the city. Our, our rental list has diminished quite rapidly. Um, we're currently running at about 2% vacancies. Council is welcoming the influx of people, calling it a positive for the jewel of the north. Uh, population increase is good for the city, it's good for the local economy and it's ultimately good for the lifestyle as well. He says people from around the nation are slowly being enticed by what Port Augusta has to offer. At the moment you've got people with investment properties that are now getting the rent that they deserve. Um, once again, interest rates are low, it's a perfect time to be buying investment property, making sure it's full. Real estate agencies like Ray White are working around the clock to accommodate both the rental and buying market. Darren Sheriff says the city hasn't seen rental shortages like this since 2005, with those looking for a roof over their head urged to consider buying. If you're looking for a rental, you'll have to look hard. Maybe turn your rental ideas into a buying idea. Occupancy um, reaches a particular level in the rental market then people really do need to start thinking about purchasing. Katrina Musson, 7 Spencer Golf News. A teenager has been arrested and charged in Port Augusta over a series of break-ins. It's alleged the 17-year-old boy broke into a motorbike shop on Stirling Road on three occasions, stealing two bikes. One bike was recovered nearby, while the second was found at a Port Augusta home. He was refused bail, and will appear in the Port Augusta Youth Court in November. South Australian Labor has welcomed the progress of the new $100 million Wyala High School. Shadow Education Minister Blair Boyer toured the construction site this morning as part of a regional tour. He also visited the steelworks to meet with local apprentices. The school that the community is going to get here is going to be really unique in a lot of fantastic ways. It's a really original design and very excited to see it and can't wait to see the finished product as well. This is going to be a school that the whole community can be proud of. We should, as regional people, have the best, and the best that is available in Adelaide. The new school will open in 2022. Carol Kalzitsky has been officially ordained as the 12th Port Perry Catholic Diocese Bishop. He was welcomed at a historic ceremony held in St Mark's Cathedral, with leaders from across the region attending the consecration. 
an installation celebrated by past and present members of the Adelaide province. This historic ceremony helping welcome a new bishop to the region. I feel honoured you know, and challenged. Honoured and challenged. Honoured that in one way is just a big responsibility and challenge because uh, so many things probably in front of me, ahead of me. Catholic leaders from across the diocese also travelling to celebrate the occasion. The new bishop was born in Poland in 1966 but is no stranger to Australia soil. 21 years in Western Australia but then last two and a half years I spent in Poland. So I have to refresh my English, I have to refresh my knowledge of the even driving on the left side. There's large shoes for him to fill with the much-loved Greg O'Kelly farewelled a number of weeks ago. Faith and hope and love. Thank you. Bishop Carroll says he's looking forward to getting to know members of the community, encouraging residents to say hello. I am excited and I think there will be so many people who greeted, greeted me and welcomed me into this community and I think I I need a bit of time to know people and to visit some uh, parishes and places. Shari Hams, 7 Spencer Golf News. Still to come tonight, Coffin Bay welcomes a new Oyster tour boat and Rotary Wyala welcomes a special guest to the city. Welcome back. A state-of-the-art tour boat has hit the water in Coffin Bay at an official launch party held on the town's foreshore. The boat's sleek design making it able to operate in challenging weather and cater for more customers than other vessels. A sparkling new jewel in Air Peninsula's tourism crown. So basically we built uh, a pimped up oyster boat. <laughs> Experience Coffin Bay cutting the ribbon of the CB01, a purpose-built oyster farm tour vessel. This one gives us a whole lot more capacity and uh, it's just a lot more friendlier inside. It'll seat almost 40 passengers and can hit the water even during challenging weather. On a fine day, its foldable windows open up so tourists can take in the sea air from out on the ocean. Despite the pandemic, Coffin Bay is still a tourism hotspot. Its famed seafood tantalising travellers, especially South Australians, getting out and exploring the state. We find that the largest number of searches on our website are for Coffin Bay Oyster Farm Tours. That is phenomenal. It's more popularly searched than our shark cage diving. Previously, the husband and wife duo had to make five trips per day just to try and fit everyone on their other boat. At that point in time, uh, my wife Linda said, we need a bigger boat. <laughs> what did you think when she said that? <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, OK, twist my arm, we better build a bigger boat. Operators say the vessel is a huge coup for the region with hopes it will further boost what's already been a bumper few months. On one day our visitor information centre had over 460 people in the door. The average for around that time of year is about 250, so that is incredible. Nathan Regter, 7 Spencer Golf News. Wireless Rotary Club is playing host to a special guest for the next few days as part of the group's 100th birthday celebrations. The Rotary car is visiting the city, transporting a baton that will pass through each district. Raising awareness for an important cause, the Wailanori Rotary Club discussing polio in the Westland Shopping Centre today. We're here today to um, make people aware that there is still um, polio in um, two countries in the world. Still present in Afghanistan and Pakistan, the money raised will go towards vaccines. All of the money we raise today, all of it goes into that fund and all the Rotary Clubs around Australia do similar things. Nobody needs to be suffering from polio these days. Uh, it's a crippling disease. Uh, and I, th I think people don't realise that it's still in the world today. The club also welcoming a special guest to town. This baton is travelling around each district in a bid to promote their values. Rotary's um, evolving and it needs newer and younger and vibrant people and we're hoping to attract it by the, the relay going everywhere we possibly can. And this stall isn't the only fundraising they have been doing here in Wyala. Last night we, we had a function uh, at the Middleback Theatre. The car will be travelling to Port Augusta next. Sophia Contagonis, 7 Spencer Golf News. 
Snowtown could be the region's next art hub, with a local couple creating eye-catching pieces in their local studio. They say all regional art should be celebrated, including a new large-scale installment brightening up the town. This quaint little studio is one of the mid norths hidden gems bursting with colours. I have open studio, so it's a sign in front of the house. People coming in here and look my paintings. There's no shortage of talent in this Snowtown household, with a husband and wife duo creating unique pieces. This special new collection, collection of uh, scarf and my dolls. <laughs> Busy preparing for an exhibition which will be held in Lock Hill, they say they work to celebrate regional towns. We open on 14th of November. My work, my wife's work, and also we have uh, guest artists, our granddaughter, Kaylis, which is 14 years old. Lots of people like this place and there is everyone who is travelling there uh, can see the improvement. Artists taking centre stage in small regional towns with large scale murals such as here in Snowtown being a welcomed addition. Local artists also pushing for a gallery to open in one of the surrounding towns. Claire, Blight, Butte, Kadina, a proper gallery here. Their art will be on display in Lock Hill for six weeks from mid-November. Shari Hams, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us, we'll check what fish are biting in the Spencer Golf. And Port Augusta's pool officially open for the summer months. Parts of Wyala were plunged into darkness today after the power went out in the eastern part of the city. SA Power Network's responding to calls around 10.30 this morning, with crews working to remedy this situation. More than 2,000 customers were affected in the suburb of Wyala Playford, through to the foreshore and the city plaza. Businesses and homes were cut off, while traffic lights at the Playford Avenue Elliott Street intersection also stopped working. Power was eventually restored just after lunchtime. Port Augusta Rotary are preparing for their polio awareness event this Friday. The club will be holding a quiz night at Central Oval. The Rotary president says events like these are aimed at helping raise funds to vaccinate the world from this disease, which currently has no knowing cure. We're trying to help eradicate a, a horrible disease and we're, we're very, very close to, to eradicating it uh, throughout the world. Tickets are still available and can be purchased at the Salvation Army. The Ryan Mitchell Swim Centre has officially opened its doors today in Port Augusta. Pool staff encouraging residents to come along and enjoy the outdoors, with the centre ready for swimmers to dive in. On Monday we've got all the school swimming starts and all our swim school lessons start on Monday. Uh, also Tuesdays and Thursdays next week we've got aerobics back on deck so it's all happening. More information about opening hours can be found online. Time now to take a look at what fish are biting for anglers in the Spencer Gulf this coming weekend. With the details, here's our local fishing experts with their tips. G'day and welcome to this week's fishing tips from Port Augusta, Jewel North. Well, the kingfish are here, but uh, there's at least a couple of sharks roaming around with those, mainly down around the powerhouse. Uh, there's a few kingfish getting landed, but uh, not all the kingfish are getting in the boat. Uh, they're getting a few chomps taken out of them. Crabs are coming in thick and fast at the moment. Uh, you're really uh, just about anywhere, sort of all over the, uh, the gulf, but uh, just try for about 10 minutes before you get the first one. A few flathead and flounder getting caught from people trying for catching fish on the bottom. No King, jo King George whiting to be spoken about, but uh, there are a lot of silver whiting, mainly over in the middle banks and along the shacks uh, on the high tides in the morning. And that's all we have from the Jeweler North. Welcome another week around the Gulf Fishing Tips. It's a fantastic week for fishing. Now when we were looking around, some of the guys that we've been talking to over the last couple of weeks have been running pretty well on kingfish. Now there's a small window of kingfish. They should be finishing up just before December, so make sure that you get a good opportunity for them. Now prepare yourself well when you're chasing kingfish because as you know, they will turn around and take all your line and if you're anchored up, you're going to have a little problem. So have a situation that you can drop your anchor onto a float and let the fish wear himself out while you're chasing them. Now we're seeing our yellowfin whiting that as it started to heat up they've come in and then they've gone away again but don't be afraid to fish for them. Look at Port Davis area, look at the Third Creek patches. 
and then we're starting to see crabs still starting to move around the place. They're usually out the deep by a checker boy at this particular time. That's all we have this week. We'll see you next week. Hi, Whalers Fishing Report this week. From the local jetty again, still lots of squid coming there. Best time, sun up and sun down. There's been a few Tommies coming along, along the jetty as well. Um, for the Tommy Roughs, it's best towards the end of the jetty. There has been a few salmon also coming from the local jetty and still lots of small crabs. So it definitely gonna have to wait a little bit for probably another heat wave or two to come through for the crabs. Um, a little bit further along the coastline towards Black Point, some nice schools of salmon coming in from the rocks there. King George Whiting from the boats, best, best um, grounds to fish again have been down towards Mount Young. G'day and welcome to Fishing Tips in Port Lincoln. There's been reports of quite a few small to medium squid over the past week, so they've been taken by the boaties as well as from some local jetties. We've had some reports of some blue crabs moving into the bay, but at the moment we've just heard of females. Hopefully the males won't be too far away. There's also been some reports of some uh, bronze whaler sharks moving around the bay, um, and they've been providing a bit of fun for local anglers. Moving over to Coffin Bay, the whiting reports have been improving within the bay. And there's been some good gar fish and also a few gummy sharks kicking around in the bay as well. And that's all for this week. See you again with more tips next week. Stay with us after the break. A Mid-North footballer receives a prestigious honour. And Alex Sykes will have the latest weather forecast. Hello again. A former AFL player from the Mid-North is Australia's next Rhodes Scholar. Queensland's governor has announced Justin Clark will study at Oxford University. Beginning his footy journey with BMW in the Northern Areas League, Clark was drafted by the Brisbane Lions in 2012. He played 56 games for the club before retiring in 2016 due to the effects of concussion. Clark will graduate in December from the University of Queensland after studying aerospace engineering and will continue down that path in England. To the weather now, and a few showers hit our region today and are expected to continue into tomorrow. However, it's shaping to be a fine and warm weekend in most parts. With all the latest details, here's Alex Sykes. That's right, John, and good evening. As you said, there were showers across most of the region. From 3pm today, Port Augusta had a top of 27, Port Lincoln very mild with a high of 18 degrees, Cooper Pedy was sunny with a max of 30. Broken Hill, a max of 26 degrees. Showers in Port Pirie, a top of 24. Wayala reaching a max of 25 degrees. Cadeen and Adelaide, both with a high of 21. To the satellite now, bright cloud in the east with a developing front and low pressure system, generating rain and storms with gusty showers along the west coast in its wake. Skies are clearing the north under dry air but gusty winds may bring some raised dust. Moving on to tomorrow's weather now. And we'll start with the Gulf waters. Winds will be west to southwesterly tomorrow between 20 and 30 knots. Seas will reach 3 metres with south to southwesterly swells between 1 and 2 metres. Showers throughout the region. Port Lincoln a max of 18. Cleve showers easing also 18 degrees. Wooden a possible morning shower a top of 20. Wayala showers easing and windy a high of 20 also. Showers was clearing for Port Augusta, also windy, reaching a max of 21, and Kadena a shower or two, a top of 21 also. Port Piri showers and windy, a high of 20 degrees, 16 degrees for Clare, Broken Hill, a top of 18. Taking a look further through the week now and we can say goodbye to the rain on Saturday with conditions mostly fine. Cooper Pedy, 25, Port Augusta, Port Pirie and Kadena all set to reach tops of 22 degrees. Broken Hill and Woodna both set to reach a max of 23, 21 at the maximum for Wyala and Adelaide. Sunday, things will be heating up again into the late 20s and early 30s. Cooper Pedy with the region's top set to reach a max of 33. Wyala and Kadena both with a top of 26. Port Pirie a high of 27, 25 in Broken Hill and Adelaide. Monday, conditions warming even further. Woodna and Cooper Pedy will have the region's maximums of 37 degrees. Port Augusta with a a high of 35, 29 degrees for Broken Hill, 32 in Whaler, 33 said to be the high in Port Pirie and Adelaide. 
So it's looking to be a warm weekend. That's all the weather from me tonight. Back to you, John. Thanks for that, Alex. And that's the local news this Thursday evening. Thanks for joining us. I'll have updates later, and we will be back tomorrow at 7 p.m. Until then, on behalf of the team, enjoy your evening. Good night. Thank you.